All right, hello everybody. My name is Derek De La Paz, and we're at Mill City Roasters Roasting Campus in Northeast Minneapolis. And we're gonna do a little bit of coffee roasting today. Uh, super exciting. We have this lovely Honduras. Um, we're calling it the Irma Aguenta. It's actually a, a micro lot that we uh, source from Cafe Imports. Um, we featured it actually earlier in the year at the USBC. If any of you guys were at the USBC, um, Warren Lathrop. Uh, brought it as a calibration coffee for all the judges and I guess it went off pretty well there um, We've been really digging it here in Mill City And so we're actually gonna do a little bit of a kind of a three roast roast along with this coffee um, We're gonna start with the profile that I created or yeah I created it but I worked with Lauren a lot because Lauren had a, a good insight into kind of what the judges were looking for for USC, uh, USBC calibration one second I'm gonna check the timer or check the temperature okay so yeah, so I'm gonna really use that ideal profile I worked pretty hard and did multiple I don't know how many maybe 15 roasts to develop that first profile um, that we use for the for the event. And so I'm gonna use that as our starting roast. That'll be what I wanna call the ideal. Um, originally we kinda called it a light. Um, I'm gonna, for this context, I'm gonna call it a medium just cause we're gonna do a lighter version and then we're gonna do a darker version. So we're gonna start with the medium or what we're gonna call medium. It's more on the light side of medium though to be honest, but it does have a lot of balance and a lot of development, post-crack development as far as uh, internally. So it is um, kind of probably more of a medium when it comes to like, extraction and actually cup quality, I wanna say, or a light medium. So uh, that's what we're gonna start with. I already have a plan built. We're about seven degrees from charge. Um, I'll show you guys my quick little plan. So there we go. That's kind of what I like to do with every, every roast. I have the first minute plus plan. So we're doing a 385 charge on the 1K. We're using the 1K and 1K charges for this whole process. I'm gonna do a 385 charge. I already have my air set to my starting airflow, which is 30. Um, I'm gonna do no fuel for a bit, and we're gonna use the old soak on these roasts. So one minute soak on this first roast. Uh, 386, so we're close to going. All right, I'm gonna start this. And we got a little countdown going, and we go. 384, so I missed my charge by one degree, so I'm just gonna quick change my notes. Not that one degree is gonna make or break the, the day or the world or the roast, but it's, it's good to record your notes because you never know. Okay, so now we're, we're in. And like I said before, I had my first minute plus plan. So my charge temperature, my charge weight was already done. Uh, my initial fuel is actually set up, but I'm gonna verify that. Um, and my initial airflow is set up. So basically in one minute, I need to turn on the ignition switch, which is gonna be right here. Um, we're at 30 seconds. Like I said, and then I gotta adjust my fuel. And then from there, we're gonna ride it out. Uh, my plan or my goal for this roast is 430 dry end or green to yellow transition. Sorry if I use the word dry end. I still kind of have old, uh, old habits. 430 will be the goal time for green to yellow transition. Then I'm looking for plus four minutes. So 830 on first crack. And then roughly plus two minutes and nine seconds post crack. And we'll just kind of, uh, here we go. One minute and we're on. And we'll just roast this as if I was really roasting as a production roaster with this as my ideal profile, which I will work off of those goals. And if anything goes long, I'm just gonna deviate off of the goal based on my initial plan. You know, so just for instance at home, if you're trying to understand what I just said, cause it was kind of confusing. Um, if green to yellow happens at 445, then mid phase was plus four minutes. So then we're gonna add four minutes. So our original goal for green to yellow was 8.30, but if we go long, then we'll readjust our goal, and then in that case, it would be 8.45. Same thing. Then we're probably gonna hit crack late too, so whenever we hit crack and we call it, we'll just do plus 209. So that's what we're gonna do. So this is a little insight maybe into uh, production roasting, not only um, one-off roasting too. You know, these, This isn't such, so much a one-off roast because I've done it multiple times, but it's more like that. In, a, in the real world, if you're a production roaster or you're roasting business, you're probably gonna do a lot of one-off roasting. One-off roasting is probably more for the at-home roaster, roasting for fun and knowledge and learning the craft. Okay, we just hit two minutes. I'm gonna quick check my data logging, see where we're at on that. I like it. Um, once you turn and you start to gain temperature, you're actually gonna see rate of rise. So we can actually think about rate of rise. I'm gonna be really honest and say you guys aren't gonna probably feel from home me paying a lot of attention to this roast profile. I'm really do a lot more talking to you all than interacting with the machine, but I've roasted this coffee probably 40 times already since we've gotten it overall, and I've roasted this roast probably 20 times, I wanna say. So I'm pretty comfortable with this roast. Now the next two are one-offs. I created those earlier when we were planning this video, and I kind of deviated off this ideal. So we'll see what those are, and I probably will be a little more scatterbrained and not as focused during those roasts because I'll be paying a little more attention to the machine and less attention to you all at home. Okay, 250, we're coming up on three minutes. All right, we, we've turned, we're seeing see, see a rate of rise line show up, looking good. 
three minutes. This is about the time when you can start to see a little color change in the sight glass and you might want to make an adjustment if you're feeling like you're going too fast or too slow. At this point, I'm not seeing a lot of color change. I'm just starting to see a lightning color of the green. So it's going from a kind of house, I don't know, that doesn't make any sense, does it? House temperature, green color, to like now a warm green color. Which maybe that makes sense. If you roast a lot, it makes perfect sense. If you haven't roasted a lot, it's gonna sound kind of crazy. I'm also starting to see a little bit of chaff come off of it. Not, maybe it's not proper chaff, but it's like papery stuff. Um, and the edges are starting to brighten, which is usually what you see. 3.30, so we're about a minute from uh, green to yellow. And I'm not seeing a lot of development. Well, I'm just starting to see it coming on now. So we'll see how it goes. I'm feeling like maybe we're gonna be a little late. That my gut is already telling me we might be a little late. So, but that's life. That's life as being a roaster. You know, like one of the things I try to teach students when they come to class is that it's very hard to replicate a roast to the second to the degree. That's that's if you can ro if you can roast five roasts in a row to the second to the degree, wow dude, you're 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 epic. That doesn't mean that your cups are going to be wildly inconsistent, though. That's not what I'm saying at all. Okay, now I'm starting to see some color change. We're getting the light tan color. We're definitely getting some stuff coming off the beans. We're at 415, so we're going to be really close. Maybe my, my initial uh, thought around 445 is probably going to be closer to right. 430 was my goal, but we're just going to wait and see. Okay, one thing I didn't do is I had a pre-planned fuel adjustment that I didn't do. So I'm going to do that right now. So I'm going to lower my fuel to... 0.5 kPa. I started with 2 kPa at one minute at that soak, if I wasn't clear about that. Now I'm gonna increase my air to 40. So we're gonna say that was at 430. So right at my goal for dry end, or green to yellow, I missed it, but I did do an adjustment, and I'm gonna call that. So 450. So we went a little long, so 450 to dry end, not a big deal but I did carry a little bit too much momentum. I wanted to do a 233 minute fuel adjustment. This is a pretty aggressive start to ex extended mid that I totally missed. So I'm gonna see how like my last minute adjustment, so I lowered, my initial plan was 233 to lower my gas from two kPa to 0.75, I missed that. So at 430, I went to 0.5 kPa. So I made a little bit more aggressive adjustment and I increased my air. So I'm hoping that those two together are gonna slow the roast down to extend my mid to four minutes. That's a little bit of a gamble, but we did have a little bit of low energy in the roaster, hence our, our green to yellow time went long, so maybe that'll work for me. This is, but this is, this is real, real roasting, real live roasting, so we'll, we'll wait and see. So now our new goal, since we were 450, was uh, uh, green to yellow. So now our new goal would be 850 uh, first crack. So 850 first crack, and then we'll just keep um, adding on and changing our times for our goals as this roast continues, because maybe we're not gonna hit it at 850. To be really honest, my gut tells me we're probably gonna hit it early, which is a little kittywampus, you know? We went long into dry, and then we're gonna go short into mid. I I'm not liking that as a roaster, I'll be really honest. But, you know, I'm also in front of you all, so I, I should probably be really honest, because you're gonna see it. Okay, I'm gonna try her a little bit, just to see everything's copacetic. Like I said, I'm not gonna be as interactive with this roast, because I've roasted this roast quite a few times. Probably that's part of the reason why I'm starting to feel a little nervousness around my, my deviations from the inputs I should have made. Okay, but we are going slow. Okay, so I'm noticing like our, our PID temperature isn't moving super fast. If you look over here, our rate of rise line has come down, so that's good. Looks like we're down in the 15s. Okay, actually we might be good. Okay, so I mean that's, that, we're at 16 R of R right now and we're like mid, mid phase. So, and I'm call, I call the mid, oh God, I call that unnamed phase, mid phase. That makes any sense to anyone? It's also in the middle phase, so calling it mid phase I think is kind of simple. Okay, I'm gonna increase my fuel at this point. I'm not really sure why, 0.75 at seven minutes. I think what I was thinking was is that I dropped down another degree, so we're down to 15 ROR right now. I don't wanna go too much below that or we're not gonna get anywhere post crack, you know what I mean? So I increased my fuel right there. I don't think we're gonna see an increase in ROR. We actually just saw it go down another degree, so now it's down to 14, you know what I mean? So. For me, that adjustment wasn't about bringing the ROR up, it was about controlling the downward trajectory of the ROR to hopefully plane it off and hold it for a bit. The ROR, not the temperature. And roughly we're around two minutes from first, hopefully. Oop, now I'm holding. I just saw the rate of rise line kind of plane, so we're holding temp, so that's good. I'm gonna do a little air increase too right now. I'm not sure why. Sometimes, I always talk to students about kind of developing the roaster gut 
because, oh, there's an outlier. Uh-oh. So my roaster gut was like seconds before the actual audible pop of an outlier. My roaster gut was telling me we were approaching crack too early, which is kind of what my gut was telling me all along once we missed that fuel adjustment. So I increased my airflow to hopefully run some energy down. Although you also just saw me increase my fuel, but that's kind of a little counterintuitive, but that's my roaster gut too. Okay, we've gone through eight, so that's good. I'm hearing a few outlier pops, but I'm not calling that yet. Oop, now we're getting closer. Uh, I'm gonna call that right there. So, 829, so we hit our goal, but our goal was a little early now that we've um, had that long um, dry, or that long um, first phase. So, now we're gonna kinda, not, we're, we're kind of now in a, in a, on a set course. Yeah, post crack with a roast like this, there's not a lot of deviation we can make. I mean, I could, slightly adjust fuel, slightly adjust air to try and massage it a little bit. But unless we're doing this roast after roast after roast on this actual machine, like this roast, I've roasted on four different size machines. The 400 or the 500 gram, the 1K, which we're on right now, the 3K back in the corner, and the 6K that's right on the corner from this one. So I've roasted this roast on four different machines. So I'm not super dialed in on this machine. So if I was, then I could probably make micro adjustments right now, but I'm not, so I'm just gonna let this ride a little bit. And I'm gonna refer to my data logging. Data logging looks good. I'm gonna postpone my update. Now we're dropping down, we're in the 11 ROR range, which is really solid. I wanted it to be around 12 into crack and then hold around somewhere between eight and 12. So starting with 12 and probably getting down to like seven or eight at the very end of it all. Okay, so 829 was first. So plus 209 would be 10, 20, 1028, that'd be right, no, 1038. 1038 would be our goal time to finish. Roughly, I end this roast around 30 seconds, 20 seconds before the end of first, and I can hear first almost over. So I'm gonna call the end of first here on my note, 10. So 10 minutes was end of first. So I guess that's, that, you know, it's kind of one of the reasons why I'm calling this a medium-ish roast is that we are ending first and then we are going about plus 30 seconds, you know? 10.38 is our goal time for development. We ended 10, or we ended first at 10. I, this, I think it was like around 27 seconds post crack or post end. So this is gonna go a little longer than I want. So I just started up my airflow. Now I'm gonna get on the trier. I might drop this a little, no I'm not. We need to go a little farther. I'm gonna let it ride a little bit. So we are gonna go, see the tick, oh it's holding pretty solid. Turn the fuel off. 10.38, we went a little far. Okay, I think I'm gonna drop this right there. Oh shoot, wrong way. And there we go. So it looks like, 10, it was like 10.50 to roughly uh, BT, 3.99. So 10.50 to 3.99 on that roast. I'm gonna reset my timer, turn my switch off. I got the grocer closed, so I'm gonna check it out. All right. Yep, looks really nice. Looks about what I was looking for. You know, this is like a nice development roast, post crack development, solid, but it's still a, it's a smallish bean. And you know, there's not, there's still a fair amount of like, um, I don't know what you call it, wrinkly skin, you know what I mean? So the, the surface is not smooth. That's one of the reasons why I think it's still kind of light, is it's not a super smooth skin. I like to think of mediums as more smoothing of the skin. But this is a smaller seed, and the cup has a lot of caramel and developed quality flavors. It's not super fruity, you know what I mean? So I think this is kind of more like a light medium. So super solid. Um, I'm really happy with this roast. I think it's gonna be just fine. It's gonna be right within parameter. I can always do a roast right, inside outside color adjustment or color test on it to see if it's within spec because I've done a lot of that for the USB-C preparations. So we could do that just to verify. With the next two roasts, I'm not gonna have that data. So they're gonna be pretty much perfect no matter if they're wrong or right. So that's kind of nice about doing one-off roasts is they're always right. So um, we'll take a quick second and we'll, we'll set the machine up to do the second and third roasts. And I'm thinking the next roast, we're gonna do the light. So we're gonna do the fast, quick light and then we'll end with the, with the longer, low and slow dark. All right, well thanks for tuning in for this first roast. We're gonna re-prepare, we're gonna get ready for the second and we'll be right back. Okay, thank you. All right, we're back and we're gonna do the second roast. So we're gonna do the same coffee, it's the Honduras again. Let me grab my, my dose. Okay, so we have the same, same charge, 1 kg charge roughly. I'm watching the temperature come down. We're gonna do a little bit higher charge temp. Last time I did 385, this time I'm gonna do 400. This is gonna be just a quick, fast, light roast. So 430 for uh, green to yellow, 
7.30 for first crack and then plus 140. So just a little bit, a little bit less, or actually 30 seconds plus less than the last roast, but just a little bit more. I mean, crack will probably still be happening, I'm thinking, right, as we drop this one. Like the very tail end of crack ending is probably where this one's gonna get dropped. So 9.10 roughly will be our, our overall goal for total time in the roaster. So it should be a quick, fast, heavily nuanced light. You know, the first one was more about sweetness, body, and balance, with a lot of nuance, but also with sweetness and body. This one's gonna be way more about just nuance. We're gonna really go for the nuance in this cup. Um, I'm gonna use this, I'm gonna use similar, similar roast style to the last roast, just kind of speeding it up. So a higher charge temp. Um, my air, the, my air, my shooting air for the last roast was 30 on the dial. This one I'm gonna do 35. So only a little bit more airflow, but I'm gonna use five more across the whole roast. Um, and then my initial fuel will be the same. I'm gonna do a one minute soak again, and I'm gonna do two KPA for gas. But I'm probably gonna leave that gas up pretty high throughout this roast. So we're coming up at 403. So now I'm gonna load up my green hopper. And it looks like we're close. And, and there we go. So 400 degree charge, air 35. Everything's already preset, so I'm pretty much just riding out. At one minute, I'm gonna hit the ignition switch again, and I already have my KPA set to two KPA. So it's kind of nice, I did that in my warm up, so I really don't have to think a lot about my first minute. And then after that, we're gonna see where we're at. But like I said, we're pretty much in the same range as the first roast for our dry end, our green to yellow, 430. We might go a little faster if that's okay. Like I don't mind going a little faster on this one. So that's so, I don't have a lot of unknowns in this first phase. Now after that, it's a little less unknown, or a little less known, a little more unknown because I'm, I'm basically shaving like a minute off of the mid phase. And then I'm shaving, you know, 30 seconds off of the development phase. So a little more unknowns than that, but usually it's easier to go faster for me than it is to go slower, you know what I mean? So just by keeping my fuel settings high, I'll pretty much go faster. So that's, it's a pretty simple adjustment there. That was one minute. So now I hit my ignition switch and we got two KPA. So I'm all good there. So on my last roast, I know I, um, I think I lowered my fuel at four minutes. If I go back and look, right around 4.30, I lowered my fuel. So on this roast, I probably won't lower my fuel much. And if I do, I probably will lower it on 5.30 and I'll probably only lower it by about, so last roast, I went from two to 0.5. This one, I'll probably go from two to one. And that probably, and it probably will happen around a minute later in this roast. And then at that point, you might just let it ride out and I might just use airflow to control this roast because it's a fast, hot roast. So I don't want to probably do too much uh, fuel manipulation. I just want to let my fuel stay. I'm just going to let this kind of ride on fuel and to maybe slow it down later in the roast or potentially speed it up, I'll probably just manipulate air. Uh, nice coffees and really hot, fast roasts. They're, they're pretty, it's a pretty s simple way to make a nice cup. You know what I mean? Like you buy a nice green. This is a really nice green, really clean, lots of nuance. And we're gonna use this kind of traditional, you know, goal, 430 plus three plus minute 40. That's, you know, I'm not reinventing the wheel here in any capacity. This is just a very classic, quick light roast, you know? So you could take this exact roast profile and apply it to any green coffee, you know what I mean? And get a pretty okay cup out of it. Now, would you need to coax that cup a little bit here, a little bit there to get it more perfect for the bean? Oh, for sure. You know, this is in no way like a fettered out, you know, 100% perfect profile. But this profile on any green would probably get you 80 to 85%, you know, to perfect. So right off the get go. And then from there, you could just work on getting it closer from that point. So it could save you a lot of work. All right, I'm gonna turn my light back into the sight glass. We're looking at three minutes. Um, picking up a little bit of speed now. Still early in the roast though, so there's not a lot going on at this point, you know. Coffee's taking on a lot of energy, so it is, there is a lot of uh, energy transfer happening, but there isn't a lot of chemical reaction happening right now. So not a super stressful moment later in the roast with a fast hot roast trying to control post-crack development. That could be a little bit stressful. So I'll probably be a lot more focused at that point. I'm just gonna grab a little bit of water and I would get coffee too when I'm out. Okay. You can see that I don't do a lot of adjustments when I roast. Do you know what I mean? I, I put a lot of effort into my plan and I do a lot of, uh, I pay a lot of attention while I'm roasting on all machines just to acquire that data so that I can use that data when I start to build plans for other roasts. So I acquire a lot of data when I roast off of inputs, input data, airflow adjustments, fuel adjustments, and how that affects the roast, how that affects temperature gain, temperature loss, things like that. And then I, a lot of times I, 
take that data and then that helps me form my plan data around a roast. This is looking good. We're getting a good amount of color change here. So this being the second roast, I think that if some of you at home were like, wow, this roast is going a lot faster or faster, even though we didn't really do much difference. And we did raise our charge temp by a little bit, but like we didn't do a lot of difference and it's moving faster. Well, it is the second roast. And you are gonna notice as you become a roaster that as the machine gets warmer throughout the day, it's gonna become much faster of roasting. It's gonna have a lot more energy that it's holding. You know, the thermal battery reference is perfect on here. I'm gonna call that right there. I'm gonna give them a dryer. Oh yeah. So we got green to yellow at 426. All right, I'm gonna let the fuel stay, but I'm gonna reduce my airflow now to 45 at 430. Okay, so at 430, I called uh, green to yellow, and I increased my air to 45, so by 10 on the dial, basically. And you can see my rate of rise just hit its peak and it's now gonna come down, which I'm happy with that. We're roughly holding around 27 ROR right now. So because it's gonna be a faster roast. We're gonna move through mid a minute quicker. The first phase was pretty much almost the same. You know what I mean? Which, to be really honest, when you get a new coffee and you're working on developing different versions of that coffee, I might just do that. I might find a nice dry phase for that coffee and just leave it as is. You know, you're not gonna roast the best coffee in the dry phase or ruin the coffee in the dry phase. So if you find a nice middle ground with the coffee, and it's dry phase time, then just use that. And then deviate off the mid phase and the development phase first. And then if you get those perfectly dialed in, then maybe address your dry phase and extend and shorten it to see what you can get with your cup. But for me, a lot of times I'll hunker down in the beginning just to get the cup really solid before I'll go back and fiddle with the dry phase. I'm very much a follower of like scientific method and so it's a variable that I don't wanna mess with a lot. I'm gonna make my fuel adjustment as I'm hearing outliers right now. And this machine can roast quite quickly. So at 545, I'm hearing a few outliers, and I increased airflow to 55, to 50 actually, so a small airflow increase, and I lowered my gas to 1 kPa. So we're hoping to extend this crack time for about another, I'm hearing a few outliers continue. 7.30 was our goal for crack, so we might hit crack a little early. Oop, that sounded, that sounded like they're starting. And like I said earlier, like that's the thing is when you get into a second and third roast, you're gonna have a lot more energy, so it's gonna be a little harder to control. And this is a one-off roast, like I said earlier. I'm gonna call that right there. And so 6.30, so a minute early on first, wow. So now I'm just gonna let this ride a little bit. I'm gonna increase my airflow again to 55 just because I really want, you know, a lot of energy kind of going through the drum. I don't want it too much to build up in there right now, especially seeing that I have a lot of energy and I kind of a little fast. We're gonna stick to the plan though. So we're gonna do a minute 40 plus. So then that would be an overall time, 6.30, 7.30, 8.10. So we're gonna go an overall time of 8.10, so a minute short, just like the plan said. We deviate off the plan, we make the plan, but then the deviations that occur naturally, we just add on time to those deviations. So we had a shorter first, so we add on our plus 140, and then from there we're gonna make a decision in the trier and the sight glass on drop. You got a nice crack going though. The only guys will probably notice too when you become roasters and you roast more, that on a faster roast of the same coffee, you'll probably get a little bit more intensive crack. And then on the next roast, we're gonna go on a low and slow roast, hopefully, and uh, we'll probably notice a quieter, longer crack. So that's just the, kind of the nature of coffee. We're hitting this coffee with a lot of energy. This is also a very nicely nuanced coffee. So in no way do I think that by losing a minute off of mid, is this coffee gonna be unpalatable. I think it'll be okay, you know what I mean? Although that was a pretty short mid. That was only two minutes of mid development. That's crazy fast. Oh, now crack is starting to slow. Might even be done. Which I was thinking that crack would only be done for maybe 10 seconds. Eight minutes, I'm gonna call that end of first. And we're gonna drop in 10 seconds. And we're gonna stick to the plan. This is a light roast, so as long as it doesn't look like super undeveloped in the trier, I'm going. And that's it. So a little late on the, on the data logging, but we're all good there. I know, for some reason I opened up that lid too. That's kind of stupid. So that was a nice fast roast. Overall time of 810. I didn't get the final BT, but over here it was 401. I was a little late on the data logging, so 810 to 401. So similar. I think the last roast was 399. So it's kind of neat. You know what I mean? So we did a roast in 810 to 401, and then our first roast was 1050 to 399. 
So quite a bit longer, almost three minutes longer and a degree lighter. So that's kind of cool, you know? I wish you guys were here to try this with me tomorrow. Oh yeah, the beans look very similar. Very similar kind of outer development. Color, color's lighter for sure, and there's way less like uh, swelling and outer bean development. I should say it looks similar, but it is a little bit variant. All right, well that was a pretty nice fast roast. I think that's gonna be very bright. There's gonna be a lot of acidity in that one, quite citric, but this coffee is very clean and it doesn't have a lot of, I don't know what you call it, dirty cup quality, where vegetal, like really strong vegetal notes, to where if it's really light roasted, it's gonna be offensive. I think this will be totally fine. And honestly, if I took part of, if I took like two thirds of my first roast and a third of this roast and blended them together, that would probably be a really nice post crack or post development ro uh, blend because I'll have a lot of the nuance from this, from this roast right here, maybe too much. And then the, the last one has a little more development, maybe too much development for the light roast drinkers of the world. So mixing those together at like a 66% of roast one and 33% of this roast right here might be a really nice cup. So I'll probably try that later, but um, we're gonna tune the machine back up and get ready to do the dark roast. So we'll take a quick break and we'll be right back. All right, thank you and we'll see you in a bit. Welcome back everybody. So we're getting ready to do the dark roast. So we're gonna do this low and slow dark roast is kind of what I'm calling it. Oh, I got the machine kind of on the idle between batches right now. So I'm kind of watching temp back here. I have my plan ready. So we're gonna do a 400 degree charge again. I, don't, I think that's what we did the last one. I have my air set to 45. So I'm using quite a bit higher airflow. Reason being is I wanna take this coffee dark a lot longer than the roaster and it's gonna go darker. And so I'm using a little bit higher airflow across the board just to kind of remove energy as I put it into the drum. Cause I'm a little bit afraid of getting too much energy in the drum and having this roast go a little bit too fast based on my previous uh, number two roast. So I'm gonna use a little higher airflow and a little bit lower charge temp than my initial plan. So now I, I've achieved enough energy in the roaster, so I turned off the ignition switch and I've already preset my fuel and my airflow. So we're pretty much good to go. Uh, 45 air, I'm gonna use one KPA for gas at, I'm gonna do a 130 soak. So I'm gonna add on 30 seconds to our soak. Our previous roast were one minute soaks. The reason being is I wanna really extend this roast quite a bit, and so I'm kinda of getting aggressive with adjustments. I could lower my charge quite a bit, I could increase my batch size if the roaster can handle it, but the easiest way is just to add on time for me to the soak. And it also kinda of puts it within a parameter that I understand. I've already been doing one minute soaks, so if I just add on 30 seconds to the soak, it's gonna kinda, of, I kinda of already know how the machine's gonna react. So I'm not creating a whole new deviation. That works for me, that's, that's something that I, I tend to suggest. Okay, 406. We'll load the hopper, we're gonna charge it 400. We're coming down pretty quickly. I'm gonna tell you guys the overall goal for this roast as soon as we charge. 402, 401, and we go at 400. Okay, so we're going, I got that going, I got my timer started, I got the data logging running, we're all golden. At 130, 130 I'm gonna do fuel. And I think I might have to adjust my fuel. I know I said earlier that I had a preset, but I don't think I do, so I'm gonna check it. Um, so the goal for this roast is 5.30 green to yellow, 9.30 to 10 for first crack, and then I'm looking for plus three to 3.30 development, two right up to second. So I'm bringing this till I hear the beginnings of second, like second outliers, and that's where I'll jump, dump this coffee. And I do consider the beginning of second dark. So. For me, the beginning of second is the beginning of dark roast, and then that takes us all the way to the darkest roast that you would think isn't carbon, you know what I mean? Like obviously carbon isn't drinkable, you know what I mean? But there is a lot of people that like dark coffee, you know what I mean? So pre-carbon, I'm, you know, I have no, I have no dog in that fight if that's the kind of coffee you like to drink. Uh, one minute, Oop, I almost started the ignition at one minute. It's kind of a muscle memory. It's one thing that like, from being in kitchens for 17 years and now being in a roaster, a lot of what we do in the road tree is muscle memory. You know, you learn how to act and how to react to things and you kind of program yourself to do things. And so breaking that sometimes is harder than just following through on it. I use a minute soak on a lot of roasts. Just, it's probably the, the, the most consistent soak time I use, basically just because it's easy, one minute, you know? We're coming up on minute 30 and there I go. Now I'm gonna check my fuel, so I don't think I have it right. Oh, I do. I'm just gonna bring it up just a tad though, because. Sometimes between ignitions, the fuel gauge or the fuel input might change a little bit. So we're at one KPA. One KPA at 130, we're right on track. Oh, 
Okay, so this is gonna be the long, lower, slower roast. You know, this is a nice coffee. You know, I think we sell it for, I don't know, maybe 450 to five. I'm not sure exactly the price, but um, it's a solid coffee. But it doesn't mean that it's not worthy of going a little darker. You know, like I said, I'm not going deep in a second. You know, I'm not going to oil. I'm not even going to like that dark of a dark. I'm going right up to the nub a second. This coffee, at the price point we pay, the nuance that it has, I wouldn't say it's a super disservice to this green. Sure, there's a lot more nuance. There's a lot more origin quality in a lighter roast. But this is gonna be a nice drinkable dark roast that a lot of people and a lot of customers would really appreciate. So no way do I feel like I'm destroying a beautiful coffee at all. And I'm not trying to mask any weird flavors of green with this roast. This is a pure quality dark roast. Something that I'd be happy to serve to my parents or to anyone who likes dark roast, you know what I mean? And I don't think of dark roast as being crappy so much either. I think of it being as very highly sought. I think of it as being probably the most consumed roast level of coffee. You know, most people that I meet day to day, they like dark roast. I'm not offended by that, I get it. Me personally, I don't drink a lot of dark roast, you know what I mean? But I do appreciate quality dark roasts. You know, when I taste a really good dark roast in class, I, I, it really impresses me. And I try and learn a little bit about that because I feel like the range of dark roasts is so much greater in what you can do as an artist than the range of light roasts. Like that last roast we just did, the, the second roast, that hot and fast light roast, there's not a lot of room for artistic like um, input into that roast, you know? It's a very nuanced, quick, fast roast. You could have a little deviation, 10 seconds here, 10 seconds there in development, but it's pretty set. There's not a lot of degrees in movement. You go five or six degrees, you're kind of moving into another roast level. You know what I mean? So you have a tight window of roast level and a tight window of time in development. So there's not a lot of artistic, you know, I don't know what you call it, input you could do on a lighter roast like that. There is, for sure, but not as much as a dark. It's gonna sound a little weird, you know what I mean? But darks can be anything from the beginning of second, like I said, right up to almost carbon. And there's a whole range of cup qualities in that, in that space, you know? And you fiddle with time, and you fiddle with temperature, and you can create lots of variant cups in the dark world. Okay, now I'm just starting to see the beginning of the color change, which is good. You know, usually this is happening about a minute before uh, green to yellow, you know what I mean? And we're at 417. Our goal is 530 dry end, so that makes me feel good. Checking my coffee, even though I know it's empty. It's empty. This is the third roast, so I probably should have filled up my coffee between roasts. Or someone should have made coffee between roasts. But we're in a working roastery, so you know, we gotta get, gotta get poundage out. Ooh, ooh, we're starting to notice some color change. Okay, we're getting close. I see a little bit of green still. It's kind of like, it's not really green, it's more white, I should say. But we're very, very close. This is a low and slow roast, so everything happens a little bit slower. Okay. Still seeing just an ever so slight color of green. Man, very, very little. But there is, oh, I think that's it. Okay, we're gonna call that right there. Uh, 512, all right, that's excellent. So, not, it was a little quick still, 18 seconds quick, but we'll take that, you know? 512 to green to yellow. I'm gonna increase my airflow ever so slightly, 52. So I went from 45 starting to 52. And we'll say that was at 530. I'm leaving my fuel as is. Let's look at our rate of rise. Our rate of rise is 19, so that's great. We're going for a low and slow, so long. We have about 40 degrees, 40, 50 degrees to move right now, so that's, that's pretty good. My math skills aren't great, you know what I mean? But that, that sounds round about right. Maybe for future videos, we'll have some kind of math person in the background that can just kind of chime at me, like when I say stupid stuff like that. It doesn't make sense in math world. All right, cool, we're churning. Everything's looking good. Rate of rise is staying pretty high. It's a little worrisome for me. All right, I'm gonna lower my fuel. This wasn't a part of the plan, but this is my roaster gut, 618.75 kPa. That's roast your gut adjustments right there. So I'm just trying to extend that mid phase again, extending the mid phase, you know? You could do both on dark roast, I feel like. I feel like those are very stylistic choices. Do you want a short mid phase to kind of preserve nuance and acidity in that dark roast level, which could create balance? Or do you want to extend mid phase, double down on sweetness and body that could make a cup that's a little bit more one dimensional? 
but very, very approachable. That's kind of what I'm going for a little bit. I'm kind of going for a little bit of the middle. You know what I mean? So not super duper extended mid phase, but I want a lot of sweetness and body. This is a bright acidic coffee. It's a washed Hondo. So it's bright and acidic. It's not a super huge bean though. So if we leave this in the roaster for 15, 15 16 minutes, it's gonna be very, very over roasted, I should say. You know what I mean? So we're looking for more like a 13, 14 minute dark. And that's one thing I don't know, I've been thinking about a lot more as a roaster because I come from kitchens. So we think a lot about size. You know, like knife skills in kitchens is very much about size and cooking times. So you cut things different sizes because of the way they cook, so they cook consistently in the same amount of time. You know, like making like a stew, you know what I mean? You might cut your carrots different than you cut your onions because they cook differently. So I've been thinking a lot more about size when it comes to roasting coffee, which is kind of more my culinary arts background, but it is what it is. Okay, I just heard an outlier, it's freaking me out. I'm going, I'm going the distance on air. So I just increased my airflow to 60 at eight minutes at the first sign of an outlier. And what I'm really trying to do is run the roast down. You know what I mean? I'm a little worried that we're gonna have crack be a little quick. You know what I mean? Like my goal for crack would be probably, we got a little early 512 plus four would be 912. So we're looking for roughly around 912 plus for first is our goal. I'm here at Outliers, we're at 825. So we might hit nine. It's not really, you know, usually with crack, it's a lot lower and slower when you do a low, slow roast. So hopefully we're not gonna get like a bang and crack here in a few seconds. Hopefully we're gonna get a little bit of a stretching. Oop, that might be it though. No, nope, I'm gonna not call that yet. So I've been calling three pops as part of the rolling crack. So if there's gaps between it, then I don't call it. I'm thinking that's it. Yep, we're calling it there. So 850. So a little early, you know, 912. So we're looking at 22 seconds, you know, early. But for dark roast, we're okay with that. You know, we still got a fair amount of time between, you know, uh, green to yellow and crack, you know, not four minutes, but we, we were close. Now we're gonna really let this ride because I have a low fuel setting and a high airflow setting. And we wanna go three plus minutes. My rate of rise right now is 12. That's pretty ideal for this because we wanna get some temperature too. We probably wanna drop this coffee, BT 415 maybe, we'll say. The previous roast were around four. So we are going quite a bit farther into temperature and time too. And you might actually see me back off on air at some point here, which I think I might right now. I'm gonna back off to 55 at 940. That might seem a little counterintuitive, but I don't wanna adjust my fuel right now because it's way too volatile of an adjustment. By backing off my air, I'm just slightly holding a little more energy in the roaster to try and keep this roast moving farther down the line of temperature. And you did see my rate of rise line, not plummet. Like, it, I shouldn't say it's plummeting, but it was a downward trajectory. After that adjustment, it just kind of just kind of held. So it'll probably hold nine right to drop of this coffee. Okay, first is ending. So we called first and it looks like 850. So at 1020, first is over. Nice, that's solid. So we're looking at 912. Or, or no, was our, our crack was 850, so plus three. 950, 1050, 1150. So we're looking at like 1150 to 1220 for final time, roughly, to like the beginning of second. And you all will be able to hold me accountable on that one because we're literally here second. And we're about a minute from that. So we're about a minute away. Ooh, we're seeing a slight uptick in the rate of rise, which is pretty traditional in a dark roast. So I lowered my fuel to 0.5 at 11. And all I'm really trying to do is make sure that the, the rate of rise line doesn't skyrocket up or we don't start to put too much energy into the system. That might have been the beginning of a, of a crack. Now we're at 11 ROR, so we're pretty much holding that ROR. We're about less than a minute from discharge at the longest. I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna look at the trier quick here just to see where we're at with temp. Oh yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna let it ride, actually. We're letting this ride. We're probably gonna go to 1220. I'm not here in a second yet. Feeling good about this. 55 air. All right, we're coming up on 1140. So we're coming up on the beginning of what our, our shortest amount of time would be, 1150. 
Right there, we just hit 11.50. And I think I heard maybe a second. So now we're in a range of being able to drop this coffee at any point. I'm now I'm gonna give him the trier. I'm gonna make my final decision in the trier. Okay, I'm hearing the littlest beans do second right now. There's just ever so subtle seconds. 12, 10, we're doing it. All right, so. It's like 12, 17, 4, 13. Which is right in spec. I think I said 4.10 to 4.15 for final temp. And our end goal for time was 12.20. So that was pretty much spot on for what I was thinking for final time and temp. Oh yeah, that's nice. We just got into second there. Like, and I, and I don't know, you might not even call that. Like I, I just heard a second in the tray. You know what I mean? So we're barely into second. So this would be like the whiff of a dark roast. Many roasters probably in middle America or not on one of the coasts might call this um, more of a medium, you know what I mean, I wanna say? Or actually more coastal roasters might call this, no, no, middle, middle America, yeah. This might be more of like a medium, not a dark, you know what I mean? But for coast, on the coast or in like specialty coffee areas, this would definitely be like considered a dark. So we just started getting the second, but it's barely in the second. So really it's gonna be a highly developed roast. Very approachable, very easy to extract. Um, you probably could even get a pretty solid cup out of your Mr. Coffee, you know what I mean? So this is a coffee that you could send home with your grandparents or your parents, and they could enjoy it. But yeah, that's a solid roast. I'm really happy with the way that last roast went. Um, so those are three nice perspectives of this Honduras, Irma Aguenta. Um, we have the medium roast that's very balanced, very caramely, a lot of nuance too, more apple citrus. We have that light roast, which we don't really know so much what we're gonna get out of that one, because that's a, that's a one-off new roast. But I'm thinking it's gonna be very, very citrusy, um, very bright very tart acid. It's probably gonna have a little bit thinner body, but it's gonna be highly nuanced. It's gonna be very reactive on the palate. Could be a little note of juiciness. This has some nice juicy acidity in it. It's very, it's gonna be very heavy and nuanced. It's gonna be very good for some of the artists and pour overs, some of the more detailed extraction methods. And now this one, this is gonna be pretty much approachable for most people, almost all extraction methods. This would be great in a Hario pour over you know, if you're into that kind of roast level, but it also would be awesome in like a French press or shoot, probably a shot of espresso would work really well. So now you guys have a nice perspective on three different roasts of the same coffee. You probably want to find one of the roasts to kind of start with maybe, if, if, you, if you're interested in developing this coffee and then from there deviate off into your own style. There definitely is homes between these roasts for nice coffees, you know what I mean? So these are kind of like bookends, like. I would go darker for sure. I probably wouldn't go lighter on that lighter one, that fast light roast. I probably wouldn't go any lighter or faster. That might be the bookend for the lightest, fastest production roast on that coffee. Definitely you could go darker. But this should give you all pretty good amount of like traction on this coffee and some place to deviate. Um, I know that the medium roast, the, the classic one, is the ideal is for sale as a roasted product. So check us out. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Um, once again, this is Mill City Roasters in Northeast Minneapolis doing a roast along of the Honduras Washed Irma Aguenta. All right, well, have a great day, and thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you guys next time. Cheers.